What's good, everybody? My name is Kemet High, associate editor of Double XL, and I'm clocking in with Isaiah Rashad. What's the word, man? Good, How you living? good to be here. Man. Word, word, for sure. Well, we've been missing you, man. The game has been missing you. You already know how hard your fans go. Uh, what have you been up to these last few days and over the pandemic? My life, my life really, really, my life really changed that much over the pandemic. I ain't really been doing shit, man. You know, yeah. talking to people. Some people call them interviews. We've been talking about <laughs> just talking to yeah. people and shit. It's the same shit I usually do. Over the pandemic, I was just recording, hanging with my kids, regular shit. Nothing, nothing too out of the normal. Okay, I got you. How long have you been working on your new album, The House Is Burning? This one was probably like like nine months, nine months to a year. This is like last January. Okay. So definitely. Well, that's over nine months. Ago. That's about a year and some change now. Yeah, but around that time, not the whole half a decade. Uh, which I think what you said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just since you, since you blessed us with a full project. Nah, it's been, it's just been like the past year. It was like a year recording and then a half a year of like fine tuning. And then the past three months of really just figuring out exactly how we're going to put it out. Okay. Straight like that. Um, Where were you recording and what was your process like in putting it together? I recorded mostly in LA. I recorded a couple of songs in my mom's crib in Chattanooga. Mostly in LA. Like the studios. It's not like a magical thing for me. I know the other artists we have in there. I be seeing it when I walk in the studio. I see the guy had a candle and they do this and that and all that type of shit. I, I really just go to the studio, and make some shit, go home. Yeah, straight like that. You get straight to it. It sounds like wasting no time. It's, you know, it'd be like an, it's like an ego thing versus a moment. For me, it's like I need to get this off, or I can't think about other shit I need to think about because I got these raps I want to hear, or this beat that I've been holding on to. So it's like like clearing out my head. Okay. Only seldom does it turn into let me go to work and do some shit like that. I just okay. need to do this shit. Yeah, straight like that. That's that's half of the battle. I can attest to that, at least from a writing standpoint, is just literally getting it off your chest and getting started. That's half of the battle right there. Yeah, I'm good. Word. Are you in uh in LA right now? Are you on the West? Right now, yeah. I'm um let me fix this uh how do you got this camera set up and shit. I um right now I'm in LA right now. Yeah, I've been I was in Miami the other day doing this thing with um Uzi shooting this little video. But I've been in LA yeah. mostly for the past nine years, dog. Outside of working, I've been in LA. Jeez, cool. Yeah. Man. How do you like that? I'm from the South as well. I'm from Atlanta originally. So how I don't like you the food. You say you don't? I don't like the food out here. I, I heard it's like trash. I like, I like, I like, like, like the little luxury shit, and the little exotic shit out here, and the fusion, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, some like black people shit. I don't like the food out here. I don't like none of the southern. I don't like none of the uh, soul food here, mm. any of that. But respect, you know what I'm saying? Good course. Okay. I want some tacos though. I'm fucking with, you know what I'm saying? A lobster roll either. I'm fucking with it. But okay. Some dressing and some shit. I gotta, <laughs> yeah. I gotta go home, dog. Yeah. yeah, you know how that go. You from the south, so the bar is is way higher when it comes to food. Like I didn't even think it was that high. Yeah, I didn't think it was that high until I, until I'm like, I guess the other people shit low. Or some shit. <laughs> you know I'm mean? saying though, nah, it'd be like that. Cool. Um, yo, how did you prepare yourself for the rollout of this project? Like, how did you find your zen and and just get comfortable putting yourself back into into the forefront? I mean, I kind of, I trust my management. Like they trust me to make the songs. I trust them to put it together at the end. So if it fucked up, then I might feel different. But since it ain't never fucked up, I be like, you know, this is my third time doing it with, with, with TG and doing it with the fam. So it's like, just, I just got shit to do. You know what I'm saying? It's like a meeting anybody else or video yeah. or whatever. Like any of that shit from there. The initial input comes from what I be wanting to do, but then once they start executing it, it's just like me showing up on time and being ready to do it, like this. Yeah. You know? Straight so up. I've been cool. I've been happy to see everybody else be all uh, goddamn excited and everything because I ain't think this many people like me in the first place. So you for real? It is. I was like, you know, I'm like, you don't ever know. You don't never know till you come back outside. You know what I'm saying? I guess. Mm. Yeah. That's a good point right there. I know you also recently started like 
well, at least over the last couple of years, uh, going on Instagram and previewing stuff. Um, so was that a intentional thing to just be more interactive with your fans or? Yeah, I want to the gauge when niggas thought of it too. For sure. After I did it, cause I don't be knowing, once you don't put some shit out, you don't be knowing if like people gonna like it or what it's gonna be usually. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, I feel that. Um, you've spoken before about almost getting dropped from TDE just straight off of work ethic. So how did you fix that and motivate yourself to to get things back cracking again? I mean, working, really? It was it wasn't a, a problem of quality or anything. I would just get something in my head that I just didn't want to do shit. Yeah. So I guess that goes back to this the shit with the studio, how I go to the studio now. I just go to the studio whether it's a good day or bad day. And Word I up. get whatever on my mind is off, get off on that, on whatever tracks I got. And then that'd be it. And at least in my mind, I can say I did something. I worked on something. Even if I'm not always trying my a thousand percent to be like a super creative, I'm always keeping my creative for it sharp. Yeah. And that'd be more the part that he wanted to see. Cause you're not always gonna come up with like your best song every day. Yeah. But if you don't practice at it every day, you ain't never gonna make your best song. Yeah. So. Now that's true words right there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I read somewhere that for this album, you were listening to like a lot of new school artists to try to, I guess in a way, study their flows and how they were structuring songs. Is that true? I think my words be getting take, taken in a way. Cause I'm like, I am not, not kind of new school. Like I got three projects. Yeah. I kept, my, my first year came out in 2014. If I'm old school in, in Kodak old school, because it came out at the same time. Yeah. So I'm like, nah, I just, the niggas just be surprised that I listen to everybody. Because mm -hmm. I get put in like this, this stratosphere, that, you know what I'm saying, of whatever type of rapper. And so I think it's more so people are surprised that I listen to music, period. It's not fucking Rakim or Talib Kweli. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, nah, I get what you're saying. Who have you been bumping? Everybody. I listen to a lot of shit. Okay. Yeah, put me on. Lately. Oh, I keep listening to this nigga, um, Seco P, Tampa. I don't know why that shit's so hard to me. Yes, sir. And of course, like Kodak and shit. I've been listening to Billy Eilish. I've been listening to, to Vince the Project. I've been, cool. I've been li actually listening to Bia before the little the, the shit with Nikki again. I went back and tried to listen to Savage Mode too. I yeah. thought I missed something. And just everything, dog. Um, a lot of boosting. This is going back on the type of shit. When I'm been in LA, that shit make me feel like back home. But you know, King, fucking Lil Baby. Yeah. Shit like that. I listen to Lil Key. I like Lil Key yeah. a lot. Work. Yeah. A lot of thug, a lot of gun. Work. Just shit. You know what I mean? I got you. All dope names in the rotation. Yeah. Um, let's bust open. I want, I want to get to your, your origin point, man. So bring me in the Chattanooga. I mean, we're going to get into music in Tennessee right now, going crazy. You obviously being a part of that, but can you describe that environment? I've, I've never been. So what is it like in Chattanooga? I mean, for me traveling and living in different places, I feel like everywhere it kind of is relative. I feel like we all feel the same where we come from. So mm -hmm. it's like small to me. Okay. But it was big to me when I was little. You know, it seemed like the biggest city I could ever imagine when I was little, but it's just, I don't even know how to describe shit. It's just pretty, y'all. It's pretty, got nice people. It's, it got good shit, it got bad shit. The food's better. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of the food's better. Word. It's, it's hot, it's the South. It's hot in the summer, it's cold in the winter. Of course. I don't ever know how to answer that. Anytime anybody asks me that, I don't assume. It's a lot of self-examining that I don't do for myself in that place. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, what you yeah. said makes sense though. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know Carson felt like Chattanooga to me when I was living there. Carson, California felt like Chattanooga. Why you say that? Because it, when, I, when you get a, I, it, it's not easy for me to say necessarily to tap into feeling the home, but when I feel it, it feels the same everywhere. I, you start seeing the same shits that make you comfortable and create the same type of shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's true words. Now bring me into the music scene in Chattanooga, um, especially like when you were coming up, what was happening? Definitely Chattanooga grew my appreciation of what I would call like the local sound. Okay. And maybe counterculture rap, where I started to understand that every city and maybe every state has a distinctive sound 
the first is necessarily the radio. So I think my shit kind of, it reflects sonically some of that shit. If you went back and listened to it, it probably doesn't sound the same at all. But sonic is like the pureness, like, it sound like they rapping for their friends and not for the world. And I try to make sure that my shit sound like that. No matter Interesting. how expanded shit goes when we doing it. Just make sure you rapping for stuff that's familiar with your friends and with your fam. So at the very least, when y'all together, y'all can rap that shit together. Yeah, now that makes a lot of sense. Um, and that brings me to my next question. Another artist, I actually found his music from looking for more music from you, uh, YG Tut, and he's featured on chat. Yeah. Brother Kevin. yeah, you guys have never missed whether we talking you just doing the chorus on Sunday service, G35. Okay. Like, how did y'all connect and what's your relationship like? We met in college through my brother, uh, Rob. Me and Kevin know each other for like 12 years. And we started off in a group, the house. I got it tight. Yeah, yeah. And, it's more, more like he was my partner in rap for a long time, but he was one of my partners in life, one of my closest friends for a long time. And I get a lot. I think we exchanged a lot of each other's style back and forth over the years. Help definitely help sharpen the creative sword that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. For sure. And you just speaking about sounding like you rapping with your friends. That's the vibe I get from both of y'all individually. That's my dog, man. That's my dog. He should be coming out here today. Today or tomorrow, some shit for the little release. Ah, that's what's up. Okay. I got yeah. you. Um, just on another note of Tennessee, uh, I know you spoke in an interview before about just rocking with Young Dolph and what he was doing with Paper Rule Empower or Empire. Um, why is that important for you to see somebody like Dolph kind of take his legacy and spread it to other artists in the city? And it's been so many. It's been so many rappers from Tennessee that was like who I thought had the caliber of skill to be just as good as anybody else. It's like the stars didn't align. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that. Well, not to say that other people don't recognize them, but I know that I might recognize them a little bit more, like somebody like Starlito, yeah. shit like that. You know what I mean, even to an extent, Abel and MJG. You know what I'm saying? Getting they, getting they just flowers in comparison to some of the other legends and shit like that. You see Ogadi and shit when he undid how he didn't grew it. I just so when I see them, when I see these people, I just it's, you gotta commend it because there's so many people in other cities. Like you can say, New York has a has a lineage of rappers. You can say yeah. New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana has a lineage of rappers. So to see the roster grow from the home state, you know what I'm saying? something to be proud of. Yeah, absolutely, it's amazing. Um, let's get into another song, man. Score, uh, Scissor and Black. Obviously, that uh, you could just assume that fans are gonna love that track. Um, how did it come together? I don't think, I think I'm a pretty good A&R, I think so, I think it's. <laughs> you said what, I didn't hear you. I think I'm a pretty good A&R producer. Oh, that's, word? That's what this album feel like to me. Like when I look at like the, the, the features and all that shit, I'm like, damn, I made a pretty, for like if I was looking to make an album for myself, mm. I was, was kind of on that type of shit. So they, them, them coming together is kind of just crazy to me. I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> that I to make that happen. Yeah. And I was, kind of, I was kind of surprised that I already got a song together. So to be able to be the, the engine for it, it's kind of tight to me. Yeah, for sure. That's a fire collab. Um, and just speaking off of that, like you and SZA, another parent that have never missed. Um, what would you say are your top three favorite collabs with SZA? The shit that ain't out. Oh, uh oh. The shit that ain't even out yet. But yes. okay. maybe. Yeah, shit that ain't out. Maybe one wins though. Okay. One wins probably my favorite. I don't have I don't know how many we have actually out. So it's probably shit that ain't even out. Wow. Yeah. We we had a type of session the other couple weeks ago. Yeah. It was crazy and shit, yeah. Yeah, I could imagine. Would y'all ever make a collab project? Man, that's like I don't even know what I wouldn't. It sounds like, I don't know why we would do it outside of just do it, just to do it. Yeah. And we ain't really do it just to do it type of people. Mm. Yeah. More intentional with the moves and stuff like that? Very. Yeah. Very surgical. I've noticed. I think it's, I think it's why we get along. Yeah. Spontaneous people who make surgical life moves. You know, that's like a baby. It's like asking us do we want to have a baby together right now. It's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I got you. I got you. Word. Um, so obviously you have this affinity for R and B as well as 
hip hop, um, even in headshots, you just talking about you having like an R and B vibe. Uh, who are your, your some of your favorite R and B artists? Excuse me, of all time, Anthony Hamilton. Okay. Um, definitely. Okay, there are, it's too many of them because I have to go on my phone again about who I've listened to recently. Okay. Anthony Hamilton, Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, uh, Whitney Houston. I'm a huge Usher fan. Yeah. Uh, as a case, I'm saying Hot Buttered Soul. That's a really good album. Um, Jessica James Brown, he's mm. pretty amazing. Bruce <laughs> Collins, like Rick James, all them. I listen to a lot of motherfuckers, man. My absolute favorite though is Frankie Beverly. Why is that? My and my grandma. Mm, yeah, I was gonna ask, like, how did you how did you season your taste for R and B and soul music in general? The women in my life, my my grandma, my aunts, and my mom. Mm. And then the rap shit came from my dad. Yeah. And it was kind of expanded from there. Same, actually. Um, what kind of rappers were your dad playing? Kara's one, uh, White Club, Mystical, Master P, shit like that. You know what I mean? Um, Skinny Pump, A Bar MJG, um, Nappy Roots. Mm. Shit like that. Okay. A lot of a lot of cash money. Yeah, that's the click. There, uh, Hot Boys album just turned. That sophomore album just turned two yesterday. So I'm a I'm a big Cash Money fan in general. Just they whole movement. So that's dope. Definitely. Or yeah. Um, one thing I want to crack open is you're always speaking candidly about the black experience in your music. I mean, we could take it back to do I? Yeah, I mean, I think, or at least from the perspective, so for example, in, in tracks like 95, you know what I'm saying? You, you represent Fred Hampton, you know, and Ronnie Drake, you have lyrics like, hope they don't kill you because you're black today. Um, so how did you educate yourself or why is it important for you to speak that truth? My mom instilled a lot of shit in me early on that I don't have a great answer for. And in the way I think, in the way I look at the world, um, I always, I always think I'm, I'm pretty present what was going on. But I say this though, none of those lines I ever had were like something I actually thought about. Mm. It was some shit. The way I come up with raps, I try to put myself in like a zone where I could for like like 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, I could kind of cut out everything else and just do that. And it was just a line that came up. Cause it made sense to me. And when, cause when I wrote it down, I was like, damn, this, this makes a lot of sense. I'm like, I like this. The, I, I like the, the eulogy be so moving part. That was my, yeah. that was my favorite part. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Why is that your favorite part though? Cause that shit real. It's like niggas always got something real powerful to say about you after you did. Yup. Okay. We know how that goes. Did you end up seeing uh, Judas and the Black Messiah? Yeah. What'd you think of it? A tad bit underwhelmed. I feel like they could have went into more detail. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought the acting was great. I liked all. Of it. I like. I like what the actors did. I like what the. I like how the directors put it together. Yeah. Uh, creatively, I know it's also probably a challenging movie to put out in certain climates. So, yeah. but I do like. I like. I liked it. I just wish they could have expanded on it more. Yeah. No, I feel like that's real. Yeah. Um, Factor Cat, you got a picture of Tupac on your wall at the crib. I got a, a little portrait. Yeah, his jail picture in my crib. Okay, got you. Why? That's such a, a significant image, but why? This is hard. They need a legend. Yeah. This is hard. That part. Yeah. He's been through something. Yeah, for sure. Um, another thing I want to get into really quick is uh your relationship with God and faith and how that's transpired over the years. So I remember you like way, way back in the day, early 2010s, you was rapping. Uh, I think you had this lyric, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said you heard your first lie in the church from a preacher. Um, and I know you said that lines like that aren't really intentional, but how has your relationship with God and faith uh, changed or grew over the years? I mean, I, I, uh, to explain that, I'd say my relationship with faith in God hasn't really like, my the the solidness that I have in my faith, that, that's, that's definitely changed, that's solidified. But the only problem I really ever had with, with religion was people. Like I, I always think that like, I, I should see um, as many people as I see going to church to be more like uh, outlook. I mean, outward. You know what I'm saying working for the working for the community. She yeah. sees more shit getting built from places that don't get taxed. Mm. Yeah. So I kind of wonder. 
and but I don't want it in a critical way. I don't like. I mean, I want it in a critical way, but I don't want it in a way where I'm trying to be too overjudgmental. But of course, ain't never. Uh, I go to church when I get opportunities to, so I just speak my mind. I ain't really have a. The, the lyrics probably sound like I have a way more, a more complicated relationship with shit than I do. But I think the fact that I can say stuff is me in reality understanding what I'm going through. Yeah, it might just sound like I'm questioning it to the listener. No, nah, for sure. I mean, what you're saying now, that, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. On a note of TDE, uh, how does it play into your career, if at all, to be on uh, with such like massive acts who just seem like they can move? Well, it's pivotal. You said it's it was like, it was pivotal. I don't, I don't talk about it that much, but it was always some shit where it was like, when I was, when I was goddamn like 19, 20, it was around the OD coming out. I was like, dog, I want to be signed to these niggas. Mm. I'm like, and it was nothing, never nothing that I like, like saw it after. But it just happened a year and a half later. So like some shit that me and the homies were talking about, like we should all try to be signed to these niggas. Cause they was tight, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. And so I say definitely one of the most photo parts. Like I know I came around the end of what you could call a blog era. My, my album came out like, Sylvia came out like right before streaming really hit. Yeah. So I know I experienced a different type of media and, and all that type of shit. And definitely like a pillow. Those are the interview. Um, yeah. Definitely pillow. Definitely probably one of the more pivotal parts. Besides deciding to rap, getting signed to TD, you're probably like one and two. Mm. Deciding to rap. Yeah. Signed, what do you mean? Yeah. Like deciding to rap. You didn't want to do it at first? No, just deciding, like making the decision in life, period. Those are probably two most pivotal parts of my career, just making a decision to and meeting these niggas. It's been 10 years, dog. 10 years, yeah. three They got a lot, of, got a lot of fucking patience with me. Yeah, for sure. Um, what would you say is most different about like your mindset, uh, let's say nearly 10 years ago compared to now? I'm 30, I was 20 and I don't even know how to compare those two people. Yeah. It's, they're so vastly different, but so they're like very much the same nigga. I do the same shit. I like the same kind of TV mostly. I watch a little less cartoons than I used to watch. Or, or the ones I watch are way more gory or some other shit, you know. Mm. It's a different side of the economy we ain't going to. But sure. like, um, nah, I like, I just like darker comedy and I'm okay with uncomfortable truths, man. You know? And I get up early. And I clean my room when I get up. If there's if I did something last night, I usually fix it. If I didn't fix it the night before, mm. I'm trying to cut Every out day. my lazy. Just trying to cut out my lazy. I think that's the only difference. I'm trying to cut out lazy and just work. You know, be honest. Try to be honest. Try not to be lazy. So it's like a good place to be in transition. Can't ask that much. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. How did it feel being this guy from the south, being on the label with like? Everybody from the West Coast. Did that affect you at all? Niggas country as hell. All all their families. Country? All their families from like either Chicago or Mississippi or some shit wow. like like a generation or two back. So all niggas is country as fuck. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's why we blend probably. They country as hell. They can't even blend. Yeah. That's interesting to me as well because I feel like when you're from the South and you go out to Cali, it kind of sounds like they have a Southern twang. And like you said, you get to talking to them and you realize they that they're just, so. they just don't wear, they, they just don't take their shoes off outside. But their country's here. It's, it's really only different. Yeah. Nah, I say that, yeah. Um, what would you say right now is like your position in the label? Um, obviously, you know, like Black Hippie would be more veterans, but then there are acts like Reason, Zakari, who got signed after you. Um, so where do you see yourself in terms of just like your, your level at the label? You consider yourself like a vet, um, still a young guy. They, niggas, they, niggas tend to ask me my opinion sometimes. What? That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's uh, about it. It used to be I just I just pulled up there my shit. Now they, they might call me ask me, what you think about this? So like that's what it's you know what I'm saying. I'm still an artist. I'm big bro to some of the youngest, younger artists. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. And then the black hippies like have a more peer-to-peer -peer relationship than but them still my big brothers. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Um speaking of Zakari, you you got on Instagram, I think it was last year, and you previewed a song. Fans think that Buddy is on it. Um is there anything you could share about I think that? He is. Yeah. Hmm? 
It's heat. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't even gonna act like I don't know. One of the sessions last year. That's Zach's. That was one of the shits that, 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 that we had started. And then Gosh. He caught me in the middle of me like having a little heat hot streak in the studio. And it was like, so now you gotta do this verse. And I'm like, all right, for sure. Yeah. Nah, that's that's an amazing one. At least from the snippet I've heard. It's your hard some real old school, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That vibe on it, it's like rainy days, like. I don't know. That's that's that's, that's amazing. It, it hits for sure. So, you're a father of two. Um, you have another baby on the way, right? Three. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Okay. Would you ever want your children to get into music? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I try not to think of my kids being as twisted as I as I was. So the the fears and share the things I experienced, I don't expect them to necessarily experience those same things. But yeah, I want my kid to learn. I want my daughter to learn how to kickbox right now. So kickboxing yeah. can't be that much scary. Getting hit in the face. That's what this shit I felt like a couple times. Yeah, I'm saying kickboxing, boxing in general, any type of sparring, like you get so used to, like you said, getting knocked out, getting bruised up, like whole different, whole different beast. Yeah, it's fucking shit. Sure. Fuck it. Go ahead. Are there any uh, major changes that you want to make um, now that you're in that position and you have C's looking up to you um, that were maybe absent in your life? I want to be somebody that has real savings, a real savings account and has real equity and, and decides not to go out because they're tired, mm -hmm. because it's the right thing for their body. I want to be that for people looking up to me my nieces and nephews and my kids looking at me it's like you know he didn't really punish himself to get what he wanted mm. yeah because that's what i know you see people who work their ass off and don't get nothing but then you see somebody who just be chilling and stacking i want to be that yeah you know what i'm saying straight like that less in the mix yeah or making the mix creating the shit. I'd rather go to more shit. I'd rather go to more release parties for myself than go to real parties. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Speaking of which, I know you was out on the scene uh, with your fans outside. You had a listening session. Uh, what's what's that like? I mean, we took them to a, a VR a little game thing, uh, two bit circus in LA. It was cool. It was a cool surprise and shit. I didn't know about it till like a couple days before. So when I found out like people were coming, it was it was fine. Got to play with a couple of them. Got to play a little air hockey with a couple of people. Do a little VR, you know what I'm saying? Shoot a little aliens with a couple of people. It's like, yeah, I got hella you. tacos, you know? Perform the song or two. Yeah. yeah. Facts. People are going crazy on Twitter about the joint you got with Smino too, man. Um, that shit, shit nuts. Yeah. That shit oh, crazy. <laughs> That's factual. That's homie Cal, though. The homie Cal, him and Cal, like, real close friends. They be okay. working and shit, so made that call. Me and Smino have been knowing each other the past couple of years anyway. Yeah. I feel that. Your freshman class came out, what, seven years ago? Um, I think you, Big Mensa. 2014. Yeah. 2014, yeah, seven, damn. Word. Yeah, yeah a little minute. Um, you, yourself, Chance, Vic, Kevin Gates, August, I think y'all quietly have one of the best ciphers in, in XXL history. Uh, looking back, how was that experience and, and where was your mindset? I was on tour with, with Q and I didn't know about none of that shit until like a week before still. So I was just more so surprised that I was gonna be on it because I think my project was about to drop. I don't even think it had dropped when it happened. Gotcha. So I was like, that's hard. I'm like, that's tight, nigga, okay. Yeah. That was just exciting. It was just exciting. I'd be, like I said, I'd be so in the moment, bro. That like, I was so nervous to see all these niggas who I listen to music. I was like, I'm here with y'all. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, around that same time, you also ripped the BET. Uh, TD had a cipher with the members of Black Hippie. Uh, SZA was in attendance. Um, you definitely showed improved. I feel like early on that you could hang and hold your own. Have y'all ever talked about there being like a, a Black Hippie project with the newest members of TD? Or is that something that you would even want to do? Uh, nah. Nah, that's them. Yeah. It's, they shit. it's like, it's they use. If they never did that shit, I don't see why we would do it, make them do it. Yeah. That's like, uh, collab projects happen naturally. They don't happen because management make them do it. Mm. Yeah. At least not for what I know of. Yeah. 
Now, that's a good point. At least from a fan perspective, you see these artists get together all the time. And I mean, people on Twitter think they know everything, but some people assume it's just like a, a money grab or whatever. But that's interesting to hear you say that it, it comes organic. Yeah, people, be, people, be, people do collab projects. Like, you got to live with that. Yeah. It's your shit. So, yeah. Straight like that. Um, bringing it back to that time, man. I got a picture I want to show you and ask if you remember it. You cool with that? Yeah. All right. Can you see it? One of us has, one of us looks older than the other one. <laughs> yeah. Word. Yeah, Yo, that you, was. How old was you, dog? Man, that was 2014. I was my freshman year of school. So I was what? Eight. You you hella younger than me. It's the beard. Your fucking beard got me thinking we the same age. What you, 20, 26, nigga? I just turned 25 today. Oh, yeah. Okay, for sure. Yeah. All right, no, that's crazy as hell. Yeah, man. That's you remember stuff. that? That was uh um, no, no. <laughs> hell no, nigga. Word. Yo, this this I don't know what one. I ate two days ago. Let me see that shit. Yeah, let me get it in the camera. Can you see it? Oh, Chris and that bitch. What yeah. was going on? There had to be a reason behind us taking this picture. Word. So this was at Syracuse University. Did y'all just catch us or did we do something? Did we smoke with y'all or something? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, I was with my boys, uh, Jared and Leslie. We had a radio show you had just performed in. Oh shit, what was you, where you, hold on, where you from, bro? I'm from Atlanta. This was at Syracuse University. So I got- I know what you're talking about. Well, I actually, yeah. I actually do know what you're talking about. I remember that. A lot of little memory. I, I wanted to see if you remember. It's like a crazy, crazy full circle moment. So how you get the fucking job? You said what? How you get the job, nigga? Oh man, I was grinding my ass off. Honestly, like I didn't really have no choice but to make something, you know, it was like, the only way to go was up. So I got in my head. Like, yeah, I always knew I loved music and I just wanted to be a part of it. I was talking about it with my friends and stuff anyway. And you know, artists like yourself, The Weeknd, Chance, they kind of they kind of helped me get to that point, you know, just falling in love with wow. just how creative people was and the stories that they was telling. Well, round of applause for you, dog. Yeah, that's love, man. <laughs> Word. Um, all right, so what else you got going on this year? Any more releases or moments that got you got? Got a tour, play? baby. Got a tour this fall. Right. Got plenty of other shit to drop, plenty of other collabs to do. And I got kids to raise. So, you know, okay. trying to make sure all this shit goes smooth, baby. Yeah. I ain't got, I ain't got nothing going on. Nothing too major, though. Nothing okay. too okay. naked major. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. What's your favorite place to uh, tour at or like perform at if you have any? Chicago, Chicago, Chicago always doesn't feel like my second home. Why? Why is that? It's where I met Kimbe, and I had spent a lot of time developing my rap shit there. Mm. And I love the food. Mm. Anywhere with good food for like home, you damn near. Yeah, it's like that. It's yeah. like that right? All right, man. Uh, one more question before we dip. Um, I want to ask you about the Uzi collab. How did y'all link up? I know you said you just shot the video. Yeah, my nigga, man. He told me, he told me a while ago. He was like, "Yo, I needed a verse for some shit. Yeah, yo, fuck with me on it." Word. And we found one that worked. Yeah. He liked it. He did it. Sent it back same day. It was a rap. Mm. That's a short story. Yeah. Man, cool I nigga. With that. Yeah. It's a solid nigga. I'm good. Word up. Well, all right, Zay. That was my last question. Anything else you want to add to the piece? Anything you want to say to the people? Man, thank you for taking time out of your day to fuck with me. Love, and like reminding me of how full circle this shit. And Ben, if you knew how many of us in the, like these interactions I done had in these in these in these calls, most of the people have been people who they was a freshman. So I'm, I've been feeling a little old. But yeah. I'm like, damn, my niggas is out here doing shit. I like this shit. I like my niggas is out here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Flourishing and shit. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, motherfucker, in a couple years, nigga. You'll see a motherfucker when you doing something bigger, it should be like that. Like, you know me, you know me doing this shit. Yeah. That'd be hard. That's gonna be tight. Yeah. It's coming. Moments. Pure. Yeah. Real shit. All right, man. I'm gonna let you rock. Appreciate you for taking the time. Appreciate you for checking in. Uh, congrats on the album, man. Definitely needed that. Definitely needed that sound on the game. So much Tell love me. to you. You too, bro. Be safe. Likewise.